filled with simple joys. Saturdays at soccer games, Sundays at grandma's house, and a date night for Barack and me was either dinner or movie, because as an exhausted mom, I couldn't stay awake for both. And the truth is, I loved the life we had built for our girls. And I deeply loved the man I had built that life with. And I didn't want that to change if he became president. I loved Barack just the way he was. You see, even back then, when Barack was a senator and a presidential candidate, to me, he was still the guy who picked me up for our dates in a car that was so rusted out. I, I could actually see the pavement going by in a hole in the passenger side door. He was the guy whose proudest possession was a coffee table he found in a dumpster. And his only pair of decent shoes was a half size too small. But see, when, when Barack started telling me about his family, see, now that's when I knew I had found a kindred spirit, someone whose values and upbringing were so much like mine. You see, Barack and I were both raised by families who didn't have much in the way of money or material possessions, but who had given us something far more valuable. Their unconditional love, their unflinching sacrifice, and the chance to go places they had never imagined for themselves. My father was a pump operator at the city water plant, and he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when my brother and I were young. And even as a kid, I, I knew there were plenty of days when he was in pain. And I knew there were plenty of mornings when it was a struggle for him to simply get out of bed, grab his walker, prop himself up against the bathroom sink and slowly shave and button his uniform. And when he returned home after a long day's work, my brother and I would, would stand at the top of the stairs of our little apartment, patiently waiting to greet him, watching as he reached down to lift one leg and then the other to slowly climb his way into our arms. But despite these challenges, my dad hardly ever missed a day of work. He and my mom were determined to give me and my brother the kind of education they could only dream of. As I got to know Barack, I realized that even though he had grown up all the way across the country, he'd been brought up just like me. Barack was raised by a single mom who struggled to pay the bills and by grandparents who stepped in when she needed help. Barack's grandmother started out as a secretary at a community bank. And she moved quickly up the ranks, but like so many women, she hit a glass ceiling. And for years, men no more qualified than she was, men she had actually trained, were promoted up the ladder ahead of her, earning more and more money while Barack's family continued to scrape by. But day after day, she kept on waking up at dawn to catch the bus, arriving at work before anyone else, giving her best without complaint or regret. And, and she would often tell Barack, so long as you kids do well, Bear, that's all that really matters. Like, like so many American families, our families weren't asking for much. They didn't begrudge anyone else's success or care that others had much more than they did. In fact, they admired it. They, they simply believed in that fundamental American promise that even if you don't start out with much, if you work hard and do what you're supposed to do, you should be able to build a decent life for yourself and an even better life for your kids and grandkids. That's how they raised us. Those are the values that Barack and I and so many of you are trying to pass on to our own children. That's who we are. And, and standing before you four years ago, I knew that I didn't want any of that to change if Barack became president. Well, today, after so many struggles and triumphs and moments that have tested my husband in ways I never could have imagined, I have seen firsthand that being president doesn't change who you are.
No, it, it reveals who you are.